I'm revisiting how you can add conditional fields to your elemental form. And we've done this video before, but I'm just doing a bit of an update. The link to get the code for this is in the video description. It's really simple. Let me show you. I've got a basic elemental form on the screen at the moment. And obviously, you're putting your name and your email. Now, let's say the service that the user wants is web design. Watch what happens when I click this. We get two new fields up here. The first one is, do you have an existing website? So it could be yes or no. And you can go and paste in your website URL. And that was based on me ticking the web design checkbox. What about SEO? Well, nothing really for SEO other than your website link. What about content creation? Again, the website link. And do you mind if AI is used for your content? You can go for a yes or no. And what about branding? Again, the website link. And have you already got the following logo, brand colors, or even your company name? Because maybe if I know a little bit more of some details, it's going to help me to formulate where this conversation or if we go and set up a meeting may go. And what if you go and tick more than one? Well, go on, we'll do web design, content creation and branding. Look, all of the items are appearing. How versatile is that? And you could use this in so many different ways. Here's how you do it. We have a contact form and we've got all of our fields visible at the moment. The key bit vote is this HTML widget at the top. There will be a link in the video description for you to go and get this code. Now, what you see on screen is slightly modified at the top to the code you will get just because I want to show you how you could use it. Now, what is really important is first setting up your field. So ignore everything you see here. Go and set up your form field. So we got name and email. And then I've gone and set up a checkbox field, which is which service would you like? And I've gone and added in my options and I'm doing it as a checkbox. You could do it as a select, a radio, anything like that. So we've got a checkbox. Here's the important bit. This field does have a title. And when we go to the advanced tab, you're going to see it says services. Make a note of your field ID, right? So if I was to go and call this services DDD, can you see the field ID below when and change? Let's put it back to services. Make a note of that. Also make a note of what your items are. So web design is number one. SEO is number two. Content creation is number three and branding is number four. Then I went and added in another field and this is now a select field with do you have an existing website and we have yes or we have no. Again, make a note of the ID. This is called existing website. There's a bit of a pattern here. Do you mind if AI is used? We have a title. We have the options for select yes or no. And the advanced tab is use AI. Make a note of that ID. Then we have, do you have any of the branding stuff? Again, it's a checkbox. We've got our options over here. You know, you would just add them in, okay? Add in whatever options you want. And over here in your advanced tab, this is called branding details. If you do this in a step-by-step -step process, you can't go wrong, all right? Seriously, it's really easy. And then we've got add your website link, which is just a URL field and basically just put an example URL in so they know what to do. So you've got your fields and you're gone and put in your ID. You gone and created it, everything is visible. Then above your form, and you can put this HTML anywhere on the page. I like to always put it above the widget it's gonna to relate to, because it means that everything is in the nice order and I know where things sit. This HTML widget, you would paste in what you get from Maxine Element .how website, just go and paste the code in. And you don't change anything except what you do right at the top over here. Let's go over the logic. This is going to show certain fields if certain criteria is met. Existing website. This is actually this field over here. Do you have an existing website? The ID for this was existing website. And I'm going to say show that if services option number one is picked. You don't put the word in here, which services do you want? No, you put in the option. Let's just go back over to the form. Go back over to the services field. Look, there it is. Services. That's the ID and the options one, two, three, four. Do you remember? That's why I went over them. Back to the HTML. If the services, that's the ID, number one is selected, show existing website. That was the ID for this. If, however, you pick number two, which was SEO, it doesn't go and show another field. I've done this intentionally like this to show that you don't have to always have a follow on. It could just be like certain options. If you were to pick option number three, content creation, over here, services three, show the use AI field. This is the use AI field. I hope this is all making sense at the moment. If you go and pick services option number four, which is branding, 
then show the branding details field. Well, here's the branding details field. Whether you pick services one, two, three, or four, don't care which one you pick, you can pick all of them, don't really bother, then show me the website link. So over here, we could either pick one option and then it will return a field, or I could return a field regardless of what option you pick. This is going to open up the opportunity for you to start showing certain fields based on criteria. So rather than you now having a form that looks like this with loads of options, instead you could have something really simple like this. Yeah, we've got the brand color, company name, go and complete it, hit send. I'm Imran Web Squadron. I hope you like, subscribe, share and follow. Go and say thanks to Maximov Element.how. I'll see you soon.